for Rotary. Proclamation whereas Rotary International was founded February 23rd, 1905 by Chicago and Paul Harris. And whereas Harris's goal was to energize the local business community via a service organization that provided humanitarian service, encourage high ethical standards in all vocations, and build goodwill and peace in the world. And whereas the objective of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service above self. Whereas the Rotary four-way test is a simple but profound statement of things Rotarians say and do. One, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Whereas today, Rotary flourishes with some 27,000 clubs and 1.2 million men and women as members, providing community service in virtually every nation in the world. Whereas here in Sheboygan, the Downtown Rotary Club chartered in 1916, Sheboygan West Rotary Club chartered in 1967, and the Sheboygan Early Birds Rotary Club chartered in 1985 continue to build on Rotary's proud, proud tradition. Now, therefore, I, James Schramm, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby wish to congratulate the Rotary International on the occasion of their 100th anniversary and urge all the citizens of Sheboygan to congratulate and thank this service organiza organization, which has done so much to benefit our community and its residents. So they got a copy of that also. OK, Sue, everything ready? Everything's ready. OK. <clears throat> we will call the 22nd regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Laux? Here. Manny? Excuse. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Excuse. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Warner? Here. 13 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. So we move to the second that the minutes of the past co previous council meeting stand approved. Under discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance? Alderman Perez. Alderman Perez. Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor's appointment, Steve. Members to the Ergo Commission are Bruce Grover, Lana Steyer Maloney, Dennis Ladwig, William T. Winkle, Dean Bogenschutz, Rich Gebhardt as a non voting liaison, Joe Sheehan as a representative of the Sheboygan Area School District, Bill Stephan as a representative of the city, county board member to be submitted by the county board chairman, Bill Gehring, submitted by the mayor. And that will lie over, and we will have the county board uh, person's name. Submitted to us by the end of the week. Thank you, Steve. Public forum. <clears throat> um, Mr. Thomas Gessler. Mr. Gessler, can you give me your home address, please? 1711 South 12th Street. South 12th in Sheboygan? Yes. OK. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I have several issues I'd like to uh, talk about tonight, one being uh, the dog ordinance in the city of Sheboygan. I had several complaints throughout the years. I had called the police department, and it seems that the dog ordinance is written quite big. Uh, it states that, from my understanding, it states that the dog should be on a leash. However, if the dog listens to voice command, that it does not have to be on a leash. Just the other day, Again, I seen a dog take off toward a lady. The lady had to go back inside of her van. 
I had one dog myself several years ago that was killed because of an unrestrained dog. Spring of the year is coming up right now. A lot of people are getting out, like today, walking their dogs. Elderly people, children. Just seems to me that uh, I'm asking the council to maybe take a look at the ordinance and it might want to be rewritten a little bit. It seems that a lot of people are walking dogs without leashes, period. And uh, as the dog goes for somebody, it seems they yell to the dog and the dog keeps going. It's a natural instinct of the animal, I believe. Okay, uh, we might want to look into a possible leash law. I don't know if it's uh, feasible, but uh, possibly when you're out in public, sidewalks, alleys, they might want to enforce a, a, leash, a leash law. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is some city financial. Okay, uh, it's my understanding the city is owed money by uh, some delinquent developers. It's owed money by uh, people who owe fines and various other things, okay? Uh, I think the city attorney possibly could check into the state statutes as far as trying to recuperate some of this money. I don't know if that would be his job or not. But uh, my idea is if the city, I don't expect them to hire somebody just to recuperate this money that's due to the city. I'm guessing about four million. Uh, my idea would be for the city to possibly put out for bids to a collection agency. That way we don't have to hire anybody. Doesn't cost us nothing. Uh, say we're owed four million dollars. We paid a collection agency 50 percent. To me, that looks like we got two million dollars of free money coming. I think it's something that the council should really consider. Uh, okay, like I'm not blaming this council at all. This goes back 25 years. When I got out of high school, this city already had a problem with uh, collecting money from people. It's just it was never really enforced. It goes back several administrations. Most of you weren't even on the council when that, that began, and now it seems to have just snowballed over the years. Okay, and uh, that's about all I have to say. If anybody wants to talk to me about either one of these issues, feel free to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Alderman Burke. Thank you, Your Honor. On that leash law, I just looked it up the other day, and when you're walking your dog on the street, your leash is not to be any longer than eight feet. Your dog is in the yard, either tied or staked. The leash is to be no longer than 16 feet. But if your yard is completely fenced in where your dog can't get out, he can, he can go free. But on the street, eight feet, inside your yard if it's not fenced 16 feet. We have two hearings this evening. I'll read them both and then if any interested persons here wishing to be heard, please come up to the microphone. We have one proposed assessments for replacement of water laterals in Michigan Avenue from North 8th Street to North 14th Street. And the second hearing is proposed assessment for replacement of water laterals in Ontario Ontario Avenue from North 14th Street to North 15th Street. All interested persons wishing to be heard. All interested persons <coughs> wishing to be heard. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. Move the hearings be closed. Move to second that the hearing be closed. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Perez. Your Honor, I, I, I have a question and I don't know exactly where to ask, ask it because it, it doesn't pertain really to the agenda, but if I may, who passed these around? It's an endorsement to you by certain people and they're all in their desk. And then my next question is, first question is, who passed them around and is Steve, is this inappropriate? Or when, since when do we start campaigning on the council chamber? I don't have one. Sure. Oh, wait. Back. My guess would be anyone can walk up a council chamber laying on a desk. I don't know. No, that was purposely put on our desk. Right. But anyone can. I don't know. Alderman Perez, I can answer partially for you. 
then my question, uh, Attorney McLean, is that appropriate? Do we campaign off the council floor? Campaign? Is that what it is? Is that an endorsement? It's a political endorsement. Uh, I don't know what they're doing on the desks. Uh, if it's, you know, I don't think there's anything that says you can't, as an alderman, if they were circulated by an alderman, that you can't do that. So I can bring my political campaign literature next time too, right? Is that what you're telling me? Can I read it? What is it that you do what you're missing there? The Sheboygan County, the Sheboygan County Supervisors listed below endorse, I take it that's political, Mayor James Schramm and lists several people. There are others that endorse Schramm but will be, will let it be known later. Is that an endorsement or is it not? I don't know if it is, is it a piece of paper that somebody wrote something on. And whether or not it's true, I don't know. Okay. okay. Hang on, Alderman Perez. I think Alderman Berg. Alderman Berg. Thank you. That was my doings, but was not, it was not going to be read on the floor. It was just put on the desk for your information. That's all it was. That's, that's not doing any campaigning. I just laid it on the desk. You're the one that got up and read it. The, oh, here you go. Thank you, sir. I realize I read it. I just <clears> got <throat> done doing that. My question is, when do we start tainting the integrity of the council chamber with anything political for any candidate, including myself? That's all my, my concern was, okay? Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Consent agenda. Alderman McGraw. Your Honor, um, I'd like to pull something from the consent agenda. Sure. It's item number 2220. As this has to do with um, transfer of funds and so forth, um, I need to um, have this pulled from the consent agenda and I'll make a motion that the RCA be accepted and, and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that the RCA be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Now this is on 2220. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? <clears throat> Berg? Aye. Serta? Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Excuse me. Perez? Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Okay. Everything else? Oh, good. I'm sorry. Alderman Warner, please proceed. Honor. Uh, first, I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all RCs be accepted and adopted. And all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. We have a motion before us that all our oaths be accepted and filed, resolutions, and substitute ordinance be put upon their passage, and RCs be accepted and filed. Under discussion? Under discussion, Your Honor, just relating back to what we were talking about before, we do get a lot of things on our desk. I think the public puts things on our desk. I have something here from Laser Inc. that was just in my inbox here. I come in a couple times during the week and check and I find notes from... Uh, Rockets for schools and other places on my desk. So that, that's not an unusual practice. So just thought I should say that. Okay. Alderman Montemayor, you have a question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple of questions that will probably be quickly and easily answered. On 22-9, mm -hmm. and I'll bet Tom you can answer this for me, and it's in my district, so I should know this. Um, where is Silo Avenue? <laughs> I believe it's uh, south of Geely and east of Calumet Drive. I don't even know if it. I think it's just a paper street. I think it's, it's right. It's behind where the uh, uh, Berg's Auto Detail is. I believe right behind there is Silo. I think it's a, a paper street. I believe. Paper street. I mean, it's it's not paved. It's a street. That's, oh. that's the right of ways there. Okay, so there isn't any actual street, or no, there's no pavement there. Okay. All right, and no street sign and all that sort right. of thing. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. I thought it would be pretty simple. The next one, 2211. Um, Mr. Hemsing called me 
And he, he feels that the problem did not resolve itself. And I said, well, I'll ask public protection and safety how they felt it had been resolved. Alderman Spell. Thank you, Your Honor. I was at the meeting where Mr. Hempstein and um, the people from South High School were there. I felt that South High School has gone pretty much above and beyond to help uh, Mr. Hempstein and to alleviate the pro traffic problems that have been there. I think most of the Public Protection Safety Committee members felt that South High was trying to do the best that they can with the situation that they have. I think all schools at the beginning of a school and end of the school are very much congested. And it's uh, really up to the drivers and the people who are parking at the school to make sure that things don't take place. But they have their, um, some of their teachers out there. They have um, their liaison officer out there. Um, there is um, an officer out on the street. Uh, he doesn't stop cars that are on, on causing you know, offenses and all that, but he follows them and stops them somewhere away from all the traffic. So I do think that they are doing the job that uh, Mr. Hemsing has asked them to do. The Thank teacher you. is the liaison officer and, and the extra policeman. OK, I'll, I'll call Mr. Hemsing and give him that information. Yeah, well, he, he, he was there at the public protection and safety meeting mm -hmm. when it was all discussed. Right, I understand that he was. He just didn't feel as though it was taken care of. Thank you. Hang on, I got two more that want to talk on this, so maybe okay. you'll find out more information. All right, thank you, Mayor. Alderman Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I was out there this afternoon, and uh, the biggest problem is when, they're, when, they, when they come out of the circle and they go to the south, make their right-hand turn, they right away hit the brakes and they make a wide turn into those driveways. There's about four driveways there. That is what's causing the big problem. If they could have some signs or something like that, no wide turn, because that is, that is where all the problem is coming from. If these cars are going out, which is they're supposed to, but then they're right away hitting the brakes, and they're all going into these driveways, and then they're backing out, and all the traffic's coming from the south, and it, it's a mess. Thank you. Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. We did have Mr. Uh, uh, Hempsing in our meeting two or three times, at least over the last couple of months. And we have a difficult situation around all our schools, but especially at our high schools and our junior high schools, uh, where some of the kids, you know, the high schools especially, where the kids also drive besides the parents dropping them off. We, we put our schools in neighborhoods, and we want to maintain the neighborhood schools, but with this motoring society we have these days where not only do many of the students drive, but almost every parent drives their children to school, you have all this extra traffic. But I think the Sheboygan Police Department has worked with Mr. Bennett from uh, South High School and his staff to address the concerns that were brought forward by Mr. Hemsing. Uh, the Public Protection Safety Committee discussed this, as I said, at length, and both parties were there in attendance and the problems were resolved to the greatest extent possible. They're not perfect. And I, as I explained to Mr. Hem, Hem, Hemsing at the meeting that it's not a 100% answer. We can't fix everything. The only answer you could have is to forbid parents to drive their kids to schools. And you can't do that. It is still a public street. Uh, they aren't supposed to be making uh, a left turn out of the driveway. So what they do is they make a right turn and then they as Alderman Berg said, make a wide turn in the middle of the street into somebody's driveway across the street, and that creates problems. So perhaps that's something we could do, and I would ask uh, Deputy Chief Shervin is here, if he can check with the department and make sure we get that on the next public protection and safety agenda. We'll look at possibly putting in some no wide turn signs if that's possible. Uh, it's a difficult situation. You have all these people arriving within a 15 to 20 minute period and all leaving within that same period. Uh, under the construction with the school on the south side, they're going to be moving that parking lot quite a ways further down and adding, I forget if it was, and correct me if I'm wrong, a couple of hundred more spaces, I believe, for cars. That's going to help in that end of it. And uh, it's just one of those things where you can't make someone 100% <coughs> happy. But as I would like to add, though, that South High School, the police department, and the Public Protection and Safety Committee are going to continue to problem solve the situation over there as it goes along. We've done this, had similar situations at North High. 
and some of our grade schools actually where we've been uh, problem solving the ingress and egress where they put the circle drives in. Everybody likes to just park there and sit there and wait. And it's a difficult thing, but it's, we have to work through it and it takes time. I wish Mr. Hemsing, uh, we could have pleased him more, but we can't literally shut down the street and that's the only way we could get to that point, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully that answered your question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, if there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Serta? Oh. 22 1 through 22 23. You already vote on 21 20. 22 20. Okay. Go ahead. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Lopes? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Segali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. And Bird? Aye. 13 eyes. Motion carried. 22, 24 through 27 to be referred. 22, 28 by the City Planning Commission recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Eagle Squadron can cadets stating their support for the Old Schreier malting plant to an ethanol production facility and grain storage plant. I need a motion to be accepted and filed. Alderman Warner. And at your, your honor, I would recommend a report of officer be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion to second before us under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2229 through 2230 will lie over. 2231 through 34 to be referred. 2235 by the Director of Public Works Engineering submitting bids for the sanitary sewer lining project to Michigan Avenue. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. I would also like to take with that 2239 oh. and ask for suspension. On both? Yes, please. We have a motion and a second before us for suspension. Is there any objections to the suspension? Is there any objections? Hearing none, proceed. Your Honor, this is uh, for the contract for the sanitary sewer lining project in Michigan Avenue and at various locations in that uh, particular avenue. The uh, bids were originally um, estimated to be at $225,000. It came in at a very favorable amount of $148,365 and some odd change. Um, this is the reason for the suspension and um, I'd move that the uh, report of officer be accepted and adopted and a resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have motion and a second before us under discussion. Also under discussion, Your Honor, the contractor would like to come in at least two weeks early. This way we didn't have to wait for us to lie it over, you know, for those two weeks. Could you repeat how much that was again? The uh, new amount is $148,365.91. Okay. Thank you. Good. Would you call the roll, please? Um, Brooke. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Lopes. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Segali. Aye. Stephan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. And Serta. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2236 through 38 will lie over. 2240 through 42 to be referred. Oh. Back up a minute. 2240 and 42 to be referred. 2241, we need a suspension. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I will ask for suspension. We have a <clears throat> motion on the floor for suspension. Is there any objections to suspension? Alderman Groff. Okay. Uh, the reason we're acting on this is this was um, originally um, supposed to be on the Finance Committee agenda, and it, it was on one that we, we discussed. But uh, there was, um, um, I hate to say a clerical error, but there was a clerical error that uh, involved this document and it was supposed to be on tonight's agenda so that they can, can get started on the, uh, and appropriate the, the proper funds so that it'll be in place for when they start this project. Therefore, um, that's why the sup suspension was needed. So at this time, I'll ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second before us that the resolution <coughs> be put upon its passage. 
under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Groff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Lowes? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2243 will lie over. 2244 by strategic fiscal planning recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the co-directors of Rockets for Schools requesting that the city allow them to use two of the days allotted to the city by the Blue Harbor Convention Conference by the Blue Harbor Conference and granting said permission. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. And that one, along with 2245, which is also by strategic fiscal planning, authorizing um, that one day um, for the Blue Conference, or at the Blue Conference, at the Blue Harbor. <laughs> they forgot center. <laughs> Resort <there>. and Conference <laughs> Center. center yes. um, that, um, that be used for the American Planning Associ Association's annual spring convention, which will be held on May 18th and 19th. And uh, I would ask that those two RCs be accepted and adopted. We have a motion and a second before it's under discussion. Alderman Bowman. Your Honor, first of all, I'd like to ask for a division of the, uh, the two. Okay. And then discussion on 2244, please. Okay. Thank you. On 2244, of course, this is the, uh, uh, for the Rockets of Schools, as was mentioned by Alderman Graff. And it's not the fact that they are getting this use for free. Yes, they are getting the city's uh, two of the free days, but they are paying for any of the setup fees the cleanup fees and any equipment that they use. So it's not like it's 100% free. So just so everybody is understanding that. Thank you, Alderman Bowman. Alderman Warner. I think on, on the same document, the, the Rockets for Schools program, we, we had a good discussion on that at uh, the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, but it's just an absolutely fantastic program that we have at the Lakefront. Uh, the Rockets program provides a scientific link not only for our children and adults, but for many people across the state and other states that come to Sheboygan to participate in the Rockets for Schools program and to go through. When it was an armory, it was a very difficult situation. I think this is going to be much better for them. They don't have to go across the river for the launch pad. They're on the same side of the river as the launch pad is, which was put in down there as a donation, I believe, by Josh Schmidt. Was that it, Tom? Donated launch pad for Rockets for Schools? Yeah. And and I think it's just a great thing. It's a wonderful program. It's good for Sheboygan. Uh, the Sheboygan Area School District used to originally sponsor this, I believe, in the beginning. They no longer do. Now it's, it has its own foundation, the Rockets for Schools Foundation. They use the Rockets for Schools name because it's kind of like a brand name. You don't want to change something that's so successful. So I think it's just a great thing, and I'm glad to see them doing this. Thank you. OK. We don't need to roll on that. Or do you want to roll? No. All in favor? Aye. Now, this is on 2244 because he asked for a division. Opposed? Motion carried. Now on 2245. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, 2246 by Public Works, recommending filing various documents. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. On uh, 2246, I have moved that the report of committee be accepted and, uh, and uh, adopted. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, there are four items on here. And of course, if you want, I'd like to, uh, actually, I do wish to speak on item number one and item number four. Item number one, of course, is the communication from the Salvation Army stating that they will be taking over the administration of the Sheboygan Child Care Center and are asking the council for the same lease agreement that the Sheboygan Child Care Center has had with the city for years. Uh, Public Works Committee had a very long discussion about this and the fact being that we are really not in the rental business and the lease that had been out there before was a one dollar a year lease. It was a very long lease and as of two years ago we decided that we'd like to sell the property to be honest with you and if anyone is wondering what it is it's that little red schoolhouse. And we did let the Salvation Army know up front that we are interested in selling it and right now they are still applying for the licensing and what have you, but that uh, we do not really wish to be leasing this for $1 a year. Also, 
the uh, uh, request on item number four is that the paint on the exterior of the building be uh, um, looked into for uh, lead in the paint, and the city will be doing that testing for them. <coughs> so that's the only two items that I wanted to discuss on this, but again, the resolution already has been asked to be passed. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2247 by finance, recommending filing document, submitting a memo from the Director of Planning and Development requesting the Great Lakes Commission Waterfront Revitalization Conference from Vision to Reality be a city-sponsored event in granting said permission. Alder McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Alderman Stephan. Yeah, just as a point of information for everybody, you're probably wondering why the first two documents came from strategic fiscal planning on um, approving this, and then the last one came from finance. After the strategic meeting, they decided there should be some committee that meets more frequently that is up on these and the requests come to. So it was decided that the finance committee would be in the future the place where these requests would come, and this was the first one that came to us, just so you understand why there was a difference in those documents. Thank you, Bill. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 2248 to be referred. 2249 by Public Works recommending establishing the fees for the construction site erosion control permits and stormwater management per permits. Alderman Bowman. Thank you again, Your Honor. I'd move that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted, and that we pass the substitute resolution. Second. We have a motion before us and a second to accept and adopt the Committee report and pass the substitute resolution under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll? Kittleson? Aye. Lauchs? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Graf? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 2250 by Public Works recommending amending section 2638.13d of the Municipal Code relating to fees for erosion control permits and stormwater management permit administration for one and two family residential uses. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. On 2250, I do move that the uh, report of the committee be accepted and filed and that the general must be put upon its passage. And if I could, please, could I take 2251 along with it? Sure. 2251 is a resolution, I'm sorry, it's a report by uh, Public Works recommending amending section 7.0E of the Construction Site Erosion Control Ordinance relating to fees. And the general ordinance attach also to that for those fees. And I move to that that uh, report be accepted and, and uh, filed and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us on both to accept and adopt the committee's report and ordinance to be put upon their passages. Under discussion. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. 2252 lies over. 2253 to be referred. Matters laid over, 2140, resolution by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Serta, Manny, and Montemir, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2005 budget. Alderman Groff. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Hearing, hearing none, would you call the roll? Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Lux. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2168 by Alderman Warner authorizing the appointment of a commission to examine and promote the expansion of intergovernmental cooperation for the purpose of stabilizing local tax rates while promoting a higher 
standard of living and economic development. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to read the now therefore be resolved and further, be it further resolved on that. And it, it goes on to say, as the mayor stated, now therefore be it resolved, the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities Commission, or ERGL, is hereby established whose responsibility it will be through the further development of intergovernmental relations to assist in the coordination of plans, policies, and programs to address and resolve issues of mutual interest. The Commission will report progress to the Common Council monthly. Be it further resolved that the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities Commission shall consist of eight City of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County residents appointed by the Mayor. The Commission will be composed of local business, labor, and government representatives from our community along with a non-voting representative from the Mayor's office. On that, I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us. Before we get into any other discussion, I will open up. I'd like to say a few words about that. Tonight before us, we have, a, we have the authorization of the appointment of the Ergo Commission, which is the Efficient Regional Government Opportunities Commission. I request all those who believe in and promote intergovernmental cooperation to support this initiative. As common council members and representatives of, representatives of our community, you are taking a leadership role in addressing today's issues and tomorrow's challenges by approving this commission. The goal of Ergo initiative is the stabilization of local tax rate while promoting a higher standard of living and economic development. The target of the initiative's goal will be to save Sheboygan taxpayers $5 million over the next five years. It's $5 million which will be allocated for property tax relief. As Sheboygan faces decreasing state revenues and an increasing demand on service, there has been proposed revenue or spending cuts which will leave the city's budget unbalanced. This unfortunately does not address the issues, the issues we face. It simply erodes the foundation of our community. This erosion will result in massive cuts in the essential services such as our police, our fire, and our streets. As mayor, I do not find this acceptable. The Ergo Commission will address these demands while upholding our community's core values and vision. The commission is founded on local leadership from business, labor, and government for the express, express purpose of promoting intergovernmental cooperation. This will then decrease the demands on the taxpayer while promoting community-wide economic prosperity and the ability to maintain our services. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think that's a wonderful idea. My question is, the Commission will report progress to the Common Council monthly. Does that mean they will report to us what they think we should do, or will they report to us what they have enacted? They will report to you what they think we shall do as a city. Thank you. You're welcome. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll? Perez. <laughs> Sorry. Did you say I? Aye. Thank you. Uh, Sagali? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Brock? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Lauchs? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2152, General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Vanderweel, and Reinflesch, setting forth the procedures and rules surrounding the payments for license and permits. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. I move the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion a second before us, under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, under the current system, when somebody owes the city of Sheboygan a fine and they apply for certain licenses or permits, the application is flagged and the per permit is held and, or denied and held, held or denied by the city clerk's office or, or whomever until the fine gets paid. This ordinance will allow an individual an opportunity to set up a payment program or make other arrangements to pay the fine and still obtain the license or permit. Sometimes, as an example, the building inspection department uh, is one place where they can issue an order to repair a, a problem at a building, it could be a, a rental property or something else, which requires a building permit for the person to get that building permit in order to, to do the repair. The offender goes to get the permit and is denied because perhaps they have some other fines out there. This would make it possible for them to legally comply with the building inspection orders 
by setting up a payment program. One other case that comes to mind is when someone owes fines and they apply for a bartender's license, what happens very often, this person may need a job not only to provide the funds to pay their fine, but also for their own livelihood. Well, what ends up happening is they may have seven, eight hundred dollars worth of fines and their license for the bartending is held up and, and they have no opportunity to make any money to pay the fines or to support themselves. So this will give us a, a way to deal with that and there's pretty good safeguards in there and then we just think it's a good way to recoup some of the monies that are out there, allowing honest, respectful people who are willing to do something about the problem that they have with this fine, they set up a payment schedule th through the city attorney's office. I believe Steve has some input into that and uh, get that fine taken care of while at the same time working. So it's a win for everybody. Thank Thanks. you. All the way to Bill. So are you going to be, be checking to make sure that they're making payments on the other fines? I, we're not sure. I'm not sure how it's going to work for my office yet. I'll have to talk to the city attorney's office, but maybe Steve can answer how we're going to monitor. I'm not quite sure on how the procedure is going to happen yet. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to clarify uh, the intent here is not to allow somebody to get a bartender's license if they don't have any money. <laughs> it, it's only in the situation where we have an order, orders issued against somebody to, say, uh, put a new roof on their house, and uh, they've got outstanding fines. We're, we're ordering to do it, but yet, on the other hand, they don't have the money to do the roof because they have to pay all these fines. This would allow, uh, if they meet, there's four criteria, and that is, uh, License or permit applied for is required by the city in order to perform a task that the applicant's been lawfully ordered to perform by the city or another governmental unit, or which failure to perform is a violation of an ordinance or statute. The applicant shows he's, he, she, it is financially unable to pay the full amount owed to the city. The applicant acknowledges the debt owed, enters into a payment plan, and the granting of the license will be in the best interest of the city. Uh, this, uh, We've had this come up, we've always, well I shouldn't say always, but for at least the last uh, 15 years I'd say, had an ordinance that required individuals to pay all their fines and judgments and things owing to the city uh, in order for them to get a license or permit. Uh, there have been occasions though where strict com conformity to that creates this catch-22 where uh, you know, they, they can't because they don't have any money, so, you know, you're, you're fining them, but yet, uh, you know, you're not solving the problem. I'd say in the last 15 years uh, that I'm aware of, it's come up maybe half a dozen times where this would apply. It, uh, the intent was not to cover just somebody who uh, doesn't have enough cash to get a particular license at this time. It's got to have... Uh, some aspect of the city, you know, ordering them to do something, and they can't do it because they don't have the money to do it, and uh, you get this, as I say, catch-22 situation. So that, that's, uh, that's the intent. It's, in my view, it's going to be only used in limited circumstances. It would not be broadly applied. Alderman Warner. And I didn't mean to mislead the council. I guess in my enthusiasm, I was just thinking licenses. And, but actually, I think it is a good thing, and perhaps those other issues are something we could look at. And uh, it wasn't my intention to mislead when I was preparing. I knew what the ordinance basically stated, and I'm just thinking in my mind licenses, and just overdid a little. But so I apologize for that. Okay. Would you? If there's another discussion. Would you call the roll? Sagali. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Serta? Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Perez? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carry. 2153, General Ordinance by Alderman Van Akron, Perez, Montemayor, Berg, and Laux. 
amend the code so as to add and delete various positions from the fire department's PO. Alderman Van Acker. Your Honor, I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, could the chairman of um, the committee uh, tell us if this was um, the cost of this and was it included in the 2005 budget? Mark. Yes. And the cost of it? Is oh, gee. Maybe you did that, Chief. Mr. Mayor, Honorable Alderman, yes it was. It was discussed in the September budget with the mayor okay. how we would save $100,000 and save two firefighters' jobs. So the amount for this was saved in the budget, and we, in that line, saved the budget $80,000, $85,000 this year. Next year it'll save almost $95,000, and it'll be a continuing savings of that amount of money yearly. Okay. Is this going from then two deputy, or three jet deputy chiefs to two? That is correct. Okay. I, you know, the um, 19 years we've had three deputy chiefs in the fire department. Mm -hmm. uh, budgets are tough. We've been looking at, we lost three firefighters this last last budget. I would have lost two more if we wouldn't have made this move. I think Alderman Graff, you're one that says people have to start thinking outside the box. That's right. We started to think outside the box. We didn't have a deputy chief retiring this year, but Shift Commander Hughes retired. Discussion with the mayor, discussion with my staff, asking him would he be willing to work that up those extra hours and that much more time to do it. Discussion with the union members, because it wasn't a popular thing to do to lose a position after 19 years. There was a um, morale situation where promotions, you know, firefighters like to be look for a place to be promoted, but it was the best thing to do in a time of tight, tight, tight budgets. I think citizens uh, came up here saying that we should be looking at fire department administration, and we did, and so that's why we made the change. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. Chief, you want to come back again, <laughs> please? <laughs> um, just one question for you directly, then have a general comment. Um, when do you plan on retiring? Pardon? When do you plan on retiring? When do I plan on retiring? <laughs> it's not officially yet, but I believe I'm retiring at the end of this year. End of this year? Yes. Okay. Then you can sit down. Thank, Thank you. you. My general comment, I'm not a judge either, I'm sorry. <laughs> My general comment, um, this does increase the pay of the fire chief and, of course, the two remaining uh, deputy chiefs. It increases the fire chief's pay and it states right here openly that it's $3,009 biweekly. That comes to over $90,000 a year. And then the others would be up to 78,234 and then the new hire would be 66,124. Personally, I have a problem with that amount of money per person. I will personally be voting against it. Is there any other discussion? Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Just again for clarification, are you saying that the cost savings is going to be actually resulting in the increase of salary in those positions, not necessarily going back to the general fund? Alderman Bowman. I'm sorry. Alderman Serta. <laughs> Ask your question. <laughs> Would you repeat it, please? I Thank apologize. you, Your Honor. I just want, for clarification purposes, are we saying that the cost savings that we just discussed will not be going back to the general fund and they will be given into an increase in salaries? Is that what we're saying? From the way I read it, yes, that's the way it looks. But uh, there will be an uh, increase to several people here. And also then, because the chief did state that he might be retiring the end of the year, that also does uh, base his retirement funds, which also come out of city money. The saving, the approximate amount of money with wages and benefits from Commander Hughes was about 90, $85,000 to $90,000. Um, by that savings, uh, we took out $8,000 to increase the pay of the deputy chiefs and the chief's position by $50. The comments we heard out there was, why does the fire department have three deputy chiefs and the police department have two and one chief? They said, we, sh we should be like the police department. So what we did is we paralleled the police department, like it's called parity, it's in a lot of other cities, paralleled one chief and two deputy chiefs, moved the deputy chief's pay into the same pay grade as the police department deputy chiefs, and then put the fire chief's position in the same as a uh, pay grade as the police, uh, police chief. With that in mind, of the 90 some thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars was taken out to apply fifty dollars a week to get them up into that pay grade to make it worthy for their extra hour and time that everybody's gonna be doing between now and the end of the year. The alternative is 
to not accept this, the alternative would be then to go back and lay off two firefighters to come up with $90,000, $90, and I will promote a shift commander to replace Commander Hughes. This is the best deal for the city. It's going to be a continued savings of $90,000. Yes, $8,000 was taken. When I retire, and I believe I can say this, Deputy Chief Kittleson is probably going to retire at the same time of the year, then there'll be an additional $12,000 savings between the, the money of the shift commander and the Deputy Chief's pay. So there's going to be another savings next year. But yes, it costs 8000 to save about eighty. So thank you. Okay, Alderman Stefan. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I rise in support of this. I, and we've done this in the, in the clerk of court's office too when we, we obviously had a, realized that we had an amount of people. We got rid of people. Well, obviously the work just doesn't not get done. People who are there absorb that. And after enough time happens, I certainly support this. The one question I have, perhaps for the city attorney, if this is document goes, does section two get printed somewhere? Because I just, you know, the individual's name is in there and that strikes me as being wrong. It should probably just be the position. And I don't know if we need an you know, amendment to delete that name, but I don't think it has any reason to be in there if it's an official document that lasts forever. That, it would get where printed. Do it's, uh, where do you see the name? It's an ordinance that would have to oh, be. Oh, my uh, copy on the back of section two talks about the commander of training, research, and developments, and then it has the individual's name, and I, oh, I, see. I just, you know, I don't see a need for that, and I don't know, do we need an amendment to get that out? Or can we just, as we? Yeah, I, I guess I would suggest an amendment to get I it out. I would so move then to just release, uh, delete yeah. the individual's name out of the section two. We have a motion second before us for amending the document. Is there any discussion on amendment? You know what we're voting on for the amendment? Here's an all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we'll go back to the document. 2153. As amended. As amended. I need that. As amended. Second. We have a motion and second before us as amended. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Okay. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Let's see. We have 11 ayes, one abstention, and one no. Motion carried. 2154. By Alderman Van Akron, Perez, Montemayor, Berg, and Laux, amending the code so as to delete and add various positions in the city clerk's office. Alderman Van Acker. God, are you disordered to put a pass message? We have a motion and a second before us. Under discussion, hang on, Don. Alderman Gross going to ask you a question here. I know it. <laughs> Same one I asked before. Um, is there a cost connected with this, and was it included in the 2005 budget? Yes, it was included in the 2005, and it's a wash. All I did was take one full-time elections clerk position and make it two part-time. So okay. it's no change in money. It was just a re... It's actually a one full-time equivalent is mm -hmm. what it is. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't know the discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Laux? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Sigali? Aye. And Stefan? <coughs> 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2254, an RO by Redevelopment Authority recommending approving the terms and conditions of Redevelopment Authority and a ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and Christine Holbrook. Uh, Alderman Stephens. Yes, I would be, uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion before us and a second that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there any discussion? Uh, just, just for your information, as a ground lease that we've been typical you know, of what we've been doing down at the Blue Harbor. Uh, Chris is going to do some development work for us. And if you have any specifics, I'm sure Attorney McLean or else Paulette would be happy to deal with your questions. OK, sure, Steve. Just uh, one comment. Uh, the Exhibit A that describes the, the location is probably going to shift over one shanty. Uh, I believe your packets have a drawing of the South Pier, and it shows, it's probably hard to read with the Xeroxing, but there's it's probably going to shift over from 
to the uh, to the west, one shanty would be 20, 21, and 22 instead of 21, 22, and 23. But that's the only okay. likely difference. Just other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Laux. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. and Van Akron. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Other matters, Steve? 2255 is a communication from Alderperson County Board Supervisor Dan Berg stating his concerns with Adam Payne County Administrative Coordinator regarding his endorsement of Juan Perez for mayor as being out of line. Rise over. 2256 is a communication from Todd Gruby, president of the Two Left Paws, requesting permission from the council to hold a fundraising pet walk on Saturday, May 21. Public protection and safety and public works. 2257 is a report of officer by the library director with respect to uh, a couple of items of information from the library board to the council. That will go to finance? Nope. Not yet. Yeah. 20 yeah. 2258 on, is an ordinance creating subsection 29-3B6 of the 75 Sheboygan Code exempting members of the Ergo Commission from the residency requirement of uh, section 29. That will lie over. We have a motion and a second before us. All in favor? Opposed? at halftime, but uh, I mentioned it during the third quarter. I'd have loved to have been a fly in the wall listening to uh, Coach Nowak talk to his uh, team in the locker room because they came out and uh, really made a statement in the third quarter. Well, yeah, at the end of the second quarter, it seemed like they thought this game was in the bag, and to Norse credit, they came out fighting, and uh, they went back to what they did best, and that's pound the ball, and when they did that, it was very difficult for North to, uh, you know, stop the run. On the offensive end for North, very exciting, the three scores that they had tonight, that's for sure. Uh, but they got to do a better job of running the football, uh, which will then, of course, set up that passing game even more. They did a nice job passing when they, when they, when they could get, the, get those opportunities, but they're going to have to run the football if they're going to have some success this year. If it wouldn't have been for that five-yard scramble by Cuts in the fourth quarter, North would have had negative yardage on the ground. As it is, they only gained two yards in uh, four attempts, and... Uh, that speaks volumes. For the game, Kutz was 16 for 35. His main receiver was Brian Herman, who made nine catches, and uh, he's going to be a force in the Valley, Coach. Yeah, he's he's good. And, you know, Coach Tuis does a good job getting him the football, and, you know, you got to get your, your talented player the, the you know of Brian's caliber the ball, and, you know, they're doing whatever they can to do that. Well, I want to say thank you to the crew. Kerry Kautzer was spinning the dials in the truck. Uh, does a good job, as always. Uh, Brian Herman was sidelined due to a uh, sick camera. Andy McKillop was on the top camera, and uh, he's uh, getting his flying wings uh, running that top camera. Great job up on top, Andy. Uh, Chris Wright, thank you for your help. My name is Mike Martin. Next week, TV8 will be at South for the annual North-South game, so uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, we'll see you down the road.